Jesus said in Matthew 28 verse 19, Go therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Welcome to Go Teach All Nations, bringing you Christ's teachings through Australian and international speakers. And here is today's presenter, Pastor Gary Kent. Well, good morning, brothers and sisters, saints of God. Isn't it wonderful that we can meet together in the Lord's house on His special day to worship Him and praise Him? My day began very early today. We had a baptism at, uh, at Milk Beach uh, and what a wonderful, wonderful occasion. The weather was just perfect. The water was a bit cold, but uh, we had a good time anyway. Uh, it, was a, it was a wonderful occasion. They tell me now that you've got air conditioning in this church and that you're all comfortable that I can preach for an hour and a half. Is that right? Well, it's good to be, it's good to be together and there's nothing more important than worshipping and praising our wonderful God. And I'd like to invite you just to bow your heads with me and we'll invite his presence to be with us in a special way. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for your wonderful love and goodness to each of us. We thank you for the privilege, Lord, of meeting you here in this house of worship today to praise you, to honour you and to glorify you. We thank you, Father, for Jesus, our Saviour. And Lord, as we open the Scriptures today, may your presence be here. And Father, grant each one of us a special Sabbath day's blessing, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to paint for you this morning with words three small cameos, three small experiences or stories and I want you to think with me what it is that they have in common. Grandmother takes her grandson down to the beach. He decides to wade out into the water while she sits on the sand. It's a beautiful sunny day and... uh, The little fellow wades out to about uh, knee deep and then he goes a little further to waist deep and he's managing okay, there's no real problem there when all of a sudden a freak wave comes ashore, knocks him over and drags him back out to sea. The grandmother is desperate. She throws her arms in the air and she says, Lord He's my daughter's only son. Please, don't allow anything to happen to him. Please return him to me. She opened her eyes and almost instantly another big freak wave washes him back on shore. She's delighted. She says in answer to her prayer, Lord, thank you for answering my prayer but he had a hat on. (laughs) Second story. This is a true story. It's the story of Marie Thiel. She lived in a city called Metz in France. I know there are some here who would have been to Metz because there's a, a cathedral there with a wonderful story associated with it. Anyway, Marie Claire, Marie Thiel, was a three-year-old from Metz. She was awarded the Bronze Honour for Bravery in France. Now, I don't know too much about the order of merit for honours like this, but I'm told that it is a very significant honour. And she was given this particular award for bravery for saving her friend Dennis. Now remember they're only three, they're two three-year-olds. And what happened was this. One day they went down to the municipal pool where they were running around the, the, the pool together uh, and they, the person in charge had to run into the office and Dennis, her three-year-old friend, fell into the deep end of the pool and was beginning to disappear down into the depths of the pool. And so Marie reached into the pool, she grabbed him by the hair, and she pulled him up, and she held him there for a significant amount of time until the person in charge 
was able to come out and rescue him. So she virtually saved his life. And she was asked by the press corps that was there, well, how does Dennis treat you now? What does Dennis think about you rescuing him, saving his life? And she turned to them and she said, well, Dennis doesn't like me. And he doesn't talk to me anymore because he said it hurt when I pulled his hair. Third story. I was in the post office not so long ago and I'd taken my address book in because, you know, sometimes when you've got to weigh an item that you're posting, you've got to get the, the weight before you know how much the stamp's going to cost and so forth. And so I thought, well, I can't put my address on an envelope because I bought the envelope there, one of these padded envelopes. And so I was down there uh, up at the, the, the counter and I was filling out my, my address and an elderly gentleman came and stood beside me and he had a postcard. And uh, he watched me filling out my address and I said hello to him and he waited and I finished my address. Then he said, excuse me, um, would you be able to help me? Would you mind uh, just filling the address in, the, fill out the address on my, on my postcard? So I said, sure, pass it here. And I, I was in a hurry and I quickly filled out the address and uh, I said, is that okay? Is that what you wanted? And he said, yes. Yeah. He said, look, would you mind just taking another minute or two and, and actually I'll tell you what to write, write uh, a little message on my, on my postcard. So I said, look, I, I'm, I'm in a hurry, but sure, look, if we can, if we can do it quickly, I'm, I'm happy to do that. So he dictated and I filled out the, the, the card, filled out the postcard and... Uh, then I said to him, now, that's it, you, everything the way you want it? And he picked up his postcard and he, he looked at it and I said, anything else? I was in a hurry to go. And he said, look, one last thing. Would you mind writing on the bottom of the postcard, P.S., please excuse the untidy handwriting. <laughs> what do you think those three stories have in common? What would you say? Perhaps those three stories illustrate occasions when people haven't expressed their thanks in the most likely way. You know, we live in an age where we are so busy and, and hectic and there's so much happening that often we forget to say thank you. And you know, Jesus had that same experience when he was here on this earth. I want you to take your Bibles and turn with me to Luke, the 17th chapter. Luke chapter 17. By the way, our topic for this morning um, was actually influenced by our well-to-do and famous musician who's here with us today, who when we were discussing the, the service and the wonderful occasion, the dedication of, of young Christian, he said to me, I'm, I'm singing, and I said to him, well, what's the, special, what, what's the special item about? And he said, we are going to share something on thankfulness. Wasn't that right, Stan? So, uh, hence a sermon on thankfulness, or unthankfulness, or the importance of being thankful. Luke's Gospel, the 17th chapter, and I'm going to start reading in verse 11. Here Jesus is on his way, uh, Galilee, Samaria, in that, in that region, and you'll see, let's see, chapter 17, Luke and verse 11. Now it happened, he went to Jerusalem, that as he went to Jerusalem, that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. And so Jesus is making his way up to Jerusalem there, we discover in verse 11. It happened as he went to Jerusalem that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. Then as he entered a certain village, there met him ten 
men who were lepers. We know the story. There they are, these men, outcasts of society. It says there at the end of of, of verse 12, they stood afar off. You see, there's no cure for leprosy. They They are segregated from society. They can have no part in any form of life that associates fellowship with other other individuals unless they have leprosy as well. And so these men are outcasts. But somehow they must have heard about Jesus. Because as he gets, they're not allowed in that village. And as Jesus is making his way into the village, they stand afar off and they call out to him. Now they know they can't approach him. So let's notice what happens as we read further. They stood afar off and they lifted up their voices. They shouted out and they said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. They call out to Jesus. Now friends, imagine being afflicted with leprosy in that day and age. It's bad enough being ill, being sick. But often when you are sick, you have the support of your family, your friends. You can go to the hospital. There are people who take an interest in you when you are ill. In fact, sometimes when you are ill, you get more attention than normal. Imagine falling ill and having no one to help you. You go to the doctor the doctor and you say, Doc, I'm, I'm, I'm not good. Something's not, not, not right with me. Can you give me a checkup and uh, see if you can work to, to sort things out and, and, and make me well again, please? The doctor gives you the check over. He finds you've got leprosy and what does he say? Out of here. And don't you come back. So not only does he lose the support of the medical fraternal, He goes home. In fact, they probably didn't even let him go home. You got leprosy, you're out. You're an outcast. You leave your family. You leave the community. You leave society. You're gone. These men were walking dead men. They see Jesus coming. They must have heard something about Jesus. They can't approach him, but they yell out from the distance, Master, Jesus, have mercy on us. Notice verse 14, I love this, because it tells us so much about Jesus. So when he saw them, he said to them, Go, show yourself to the priests. And so it was that they went, and so Jesus said to them, All right, guys. Go and show yourself to the priest. Now, why would Jesus ask them to do that? Simply for this reason. It was the priest who determined or gave the the certificate of being clean after you'd been separated from society with leprosy. So the priest would have checked them over. In fact, they were, in in a sense, uh, part of the medical fraternal. And so Jesus says, go and see the priests. And the priests will see that you've been cured. And you'll be able to go home again. You will be able to participate in the activities of society again. Can you imagine? Can you imagine what was running through the minds of those men? They set off in a hurry. And as they ran, they were cleansed. Their faith, in other words brought about their faith in Jesus and following his word, brought about healing. So we see what happens there as as we go on. And so it was that as they went, they were cleansed. Now one of them, when he saw that he was healed, returned. And with a loud voice, what did he do, friends? He glorified God and he fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And what was he? He was already an outcast. The Samaritans and the Jews didn't get on. They had history that went back many, many years. 
There was a hatred between each other. But maybe their illness, their leprosy brought them together. But I imagine that even in that group of ten, if the others were all Jews and he was the only Samaritan, he would have pretty well been an outcast even amongst that group. So there they are running and they recognize that they have been healed. Can you imagine the joy? They probably haven't seen their loved ones for who knows how long. They haven't sat around the family table. They haven't had worship after tea. Now they are thinking about all those things. I am well. They realize that they can now fit into family life again. They can enjoy all the things that we take for granted today. Can you understand why they forgot? I can. They were just typical human beings like you and me. They were already planning all the things that they were going to do again. And in their rush to get back into the daily hustle and bustle of life, they forgot something, didn't they? One of them remembers. One of them remembers. And you notice he comes back, he returned, and with a loud voice, he glorified God and he fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. So Jesus answered and said, How many were cleansed? Weren't there ten of you? Weren't there ten of you standing off and yelling out at me? Weren't there ten of you that were cleansed, that were healed? But where are the nine? Were they... Were there not any found who returned to give glory to God except this foreigner? And then he turns to the Samaritan. Look, they'd all been blessed, hadn't they? All ten had been healed. And Jesus doesn't hold it against them that they forget. They were already planning their busy day, all the things they'd be able to do again. Jesus understands. Probably just as well they weren't dependent on their healing from me. Jesus understands. They'd all been blessed. Only one remembers to say thank you. But then notice what happens. In verse 10. Uh, let's go to verse, uh, sorry, verse 19. And he says to this Samaritan, this foreigner, arise, go on your way. Your faith has made you well. The Samaritan gets something extra. He gets something special. He gets a double blessing. He gets a relationship with the Master. Friends, We're all involved in busy lives. Do we remember to say thank you? Everything we have comes from the Lord. And I've got to ask myself, how often do I take time to really thank God? Oh yeah, I thank him every time I sit down to eat. It takes me about, I've timed it. I can say the grace in about five seconds. In fact, I've been working with two men who are, who are non-Adventists producing some television programs for It Is Written, it is written Television Ministry. And we have a little studio out at Richmond, uh, which means we've got to drive for about an hour to get there. And uh, so at lunchtime, we eat out there and we eat together. So we usually go into uh, Subway. 
there's a subway there. And look, I quite like subway, but we, day after day... Anyway, we go to subway. And I insist on saying the blessing in subway. So these two friends of mine, they get their subway first, they rush over, they unwrap it, they get all ready, but now they don't eat until I get mine and come and sit next to them and they wait for me to say the blessing. And I know they time my blessing. And so I've timed it too. Uh, I can say a blessing in just a few seconds. And thank God. But you know, how often, friends, do we genuinely sit down, kneel down, thank God for the many blessings that he bestows upon us? Everything I have comes from the Lord. I think that I could probably spend... If I started thanking the Lord for all the things that I can think of that he does for me every day, I reckon it would take me at least an hour if I started mentioning them by name. There's just so much. When I sit down and begin to to just think about it. Friends, isn't it true for all of us? We are back into society and our busy lifestyle and the hustle and the bustle of everyday life. But are we like the Samaritan who took the time to come back and say thank you? I want to draw your attention now to a lady who did say thank you. It's a beautiful story. It's told in the Old Testament And you'll find her story in 1 Samuel, the second chapter. By the way, how are you enjoying this quarter's Sabbath school lessons? Finding them good? I really love them. The unknowns we're studying about, aren't we? No, the people that you rarely hear about. The sort of the little people in the Bible. Well, but aren't they? I just, I can relate to those people. I just, I can, I can live their story as I go through it. And that's what I love about the Sabbath school lessons. You know, friends, I'm told that if you regularly study your Sabbath school lesson, every five years you will work right through the scriptures. Isn't that great? So, You know, we're so busy, I know we can't all find time to to read the Bible a lot, but if you just do the Sabbath school lesson on a five-year cycle, you will go completely through the Scriptures. And you'll have wonderful experiences like studying about these little-known individuals in the Bible. Their story is my story. We can all relate to the experiences of these individuals. And I love the story of Hannah in, in in our quarterly uh, this, this, uh, in our lessons this, this quarterly. 1 Samuel chapter 2 and verse 1. And I want to read that first. I'm going to start with her prayer here. Notice what she says. And Hannah prayed and said, My heart rejoices in the Lord. My horn is exalted in the Lord. I smile at who? My enemies. She can smile at them. How nice. Because I rejoice in your salvation. There is none holy like the Lord, for there is none beside you, nor is there any rock like our God. You know, friends, you can only pray a prayer like that when you really experience a meaningful answer to prayer. Isn't that right? She's saying, Lord, I'm not worried about what they say about me anymore. I can smile at them. You know why, friends? Because she has been to hell and back. Here is a woman who has suffered. You know, in the age back there, And I know there are women in this audience who are professionals, who hold as high a 
role in their profession as anyone can. And I thank the Lord for that. How wonderful it is that people, regardless of their gender, can reach their true potential. But you know, in Hannah's day, if you're a lady, there was only one job for you. That was childbearing and child rearing. There was nothing else to do. And your entire identity and your security in the future revolved around the children that you had and particularly the boy children, the male ch- ch- children. And here was a lady who had no children, let alone a male child. And so she had no purpose in life. She had no future. She was doomed. Her husband had already taken another woman. And did she rub it in? She made life for Hannah unbearable. Unbearable. And so when Hannah now has had her prayer answered, she can say, Lord, I don't care who they are, my enemies, you've answered my prayer. I have everything now because of you and I can just smile at my enemies. Wonderful prayer. I like the story of Hannah because... She thanked the Lord. And she made a sacrifice. Because as you read through her experience, you find out how to handle pain. Chapter 1 and verse 15. Let's go back and... uh, And read a little of her experience. 1 Samuel chapter 1 and verse 15. So she's gone up to the temple. She's praying to the Lord, please Lord. And then notice in verse 15, And Hannah answered and said, you know, Eli said to her, How long? He thought she was drunk. How long will you be drunk? Put your wine away from you. And Hannah says, now hold on, hold on sir. And Hannah answered and said, No, my Lord, I am a woman of sorrowful spirit. I have drunk neither wine nor intoxicating drink. But what has she done? But have poured out my soul before the Lord. Here is a woman who has really gone down on her knees before the Lord and shed her innermost concerns and sorrows with the Lord. She's poured out her soul before the Lord. It's the most intense, it's the most intimate kind of prayer. And you know, friends, it seems that all too often you can only pray that prayer when you are in deep distress. But it shouldn't be that way, should it? Shouldn't we pour our soul out before the Lord regularly? Don't we have much to pray about, to petition the Lord for, to thank the Lord for? Here is a woman who pours out her soul to the Lord. The most, the deepest, most intimate kind of prayer. And then she makes a promise. Come back to verse 11. Then she made a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if you will indeed look on the affliction of your maidservant and remember me and not forget your maidservant, but will give your maidservant a male child, then I will give him to the Lord all the days of his life and no razor shall come upon his head. If God answers my prayer, she says, and gives me a son, 
she would give him back to the Lord. That's what she said. Lord, answer my prayer, please. You know what this means to me. And if you answer my prayer, Lord, I will return him to you. I will give him back to you, Lord. And so she then dedicates Samuel, her firstborn, to the Lord. Notice chapter 1, verses 27 and 28. For this child I prayed, and the Lord has granted me my petition which I asked of him. Therefore I also have lent him to the Lord. As long as he lives, he shall be lent to the Lord. So they worshipped the Lord there. She kept a promise, didn't she? She was so thankful. She was so grateful. She poured out her soul before the Lord. And the Lord had heard her prayer. He had answered that prayer and she never forgot. She never forgot the promise that she'd made, the commitment that she'd made, and she kept that promise. That precious boy who was everything to her. She returns him to the Lord. And she does it with a thankful and a grateful heart. How does the Lord respond? The Lord honours her faith and love. Because friends, come with me a little further over to 1 Samuel chapter 2 and let's have a look at verse 21. Next chapter, 1 Samuel chapter 2 and verse 21. Notice what happens. And the Lord visited Hannah so that she conceived and bore how many sons? Three sons and two daughters. Isn't that wonderful? The Lord blessed her bountifully because she had responded to the gift and the blessing that the Lord had given her. Dear Heavenly Father, We've been reminded today of your wonderful goodness to us. Dear Lord, we thank you for life. We thank you for our families. We thank you for our church community. Lord, we thank you for the Sabbath day. And as Stan has expressed the sentiments of our hearts by singing a song of thanks, Lord, we too raise our hearts in thanks to you today for the many blessings you bestow upon us. And most of all, Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for Jesus who makes everything else possible. And so, Father, we ask for your continued blessing as we leave this place. In a special way, Lord, be with little Christian Nicholas, be with his dear parents, Leo and Claudine, and his darling little sister Isabel. Bless them as a family, we pray. And Lord, we look forward to that day when Jesus will come as King of kings and Lord of lords. And as our prayer, Lord, that each one of us here will be found ready and waiting to meet you. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. This message was made available by the Wallara Seventh-day Adventist Church. For more resources like this, visit wallarachurch.org. That's wallara, W-O-O-L-L-A-H-R-A, church.org. I cannot comprehend the agonies of Calvary. Who the perfect Holy One crushed for some, drank the bitter cup reserved for me. Your blood has washed away my sin, Jesus name. Thank you, once you're in.
came to say thank you Jesus for making my life complete I just came to say I love you and to thank you for Calvary came to earth to save you from all sin and strife. I just came to earth to love you and to give you a brand
just came to say thank you Jesus sing to me of heaven sing that song of peace from the toils that by me it will bring release burdens will be lifted that are pressing so showers of great blessing or my heart will flow sing to sing me to of me heaven of let me fondly dream of its golden, of its golden glory of its pearly Sing to me me when shadows of the evening fall. Sing to me me of heaven, sweetest song song of all. Sing to me of heaven as I walk alone, dreaming of the comrades that so long have gone. In a fairer region among the angel throng, they are happy as they sing that old sweet song. Sing to sing me to of me heaven, heaven, let me finally dream of its golden, of its golden glory, of its pearly gleam. Sing to sing me to when shadows of the of evening, evening fall. Sing to sing me to of heaven, sweetest, sweetest song sweetest of all. Sing to me of heaven tenderly and low Till the shadows o'er me rise and swiftly go When my heart is weary, when the day is long Sing to me of heaven, sing that old sweet song Sing to me me of heaven, heaven. let me fondly fondly dream of its golden golden glory, of its pearly gleam. Sing to me me when shadows of the evening evening fall. Sing to me me of heaven, sweetest sweetest song of all. Casey Butler, and I want to welcome you to Healthy Living Around the World. I am on site at Hergelia Lifestyle Center in Romania, and my guest today is Alexandru Anitza. Welcome, Alexandru. Thank you. Hello. Would you like to share with me today where you are from? I am from Romania. Okay. Which part of Romania? From the east, from Galat. Okay. Yeah. How far away is that from here at Hercalia? Six, seven, eight hours. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. So it's a little ways yeah. drive. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So how did you come to be here at Hercalia? Um For me, it is a, is a quick story. It was, I was preparing to do the next thing, to go to, I wanted Marine Academy. This was my goal, to oh. go to Marine Academy, yes. uh, to become deck officer and eventually captain on a cruise ship. This was my dream. Wow. And I had many options available. I was accepted in Cyprus, mm-hmm. in many places. I was thinking where to go, but complications, complications. Time was running out. Yes. And the way I came to know about Hergelia, my mom said she got contacted by the husband of an old friend of hers, oh. and which happened to be the director. And I ended up doing the interview and was accepted, and here I am. It was all very quick. That's interesting. So then, like, you hadn't heard about it when Never. you first, when they first spoke to you about coming here. Like, what, what did you think? Were you interested in coming to a place like this? It's very different to being, you know, to studying marine work and being on a ship. Yeah, I didn't know what to expect. However, I had heard of, throughout my life, I heard of Hergelia, but only about the sanitarium. Okay. I didn't really know much, neither did my mother, only about the sanitarium we Ah. had heard. Um, And when I heard it was a school, Mm -hmm. I also didn't know what to expect. I was thinking it's a school with hundreds of students. I didn't know what to expect. I've never heard of mission school. Yes. So it was very different than what I expected, but it was a blessing and I did not regret it. Oh, good. So then when you've come here, how big is the school? Well, when I came, 
after a few days, because I was uh, the third or fourth student. Yes. After a few days, it was a small group of seven only. Oh, really? Only seven, yeah. That's quite a small group, isn't it? Yeah, with students from all over the world. Amazing. Ah, yeah. so lots of different cultures and perspectives all coming together. Yeah. yeah, actually, I was thinking that I'm the only one who's going to be flying in because at the time I was in the UK and I was thinking... I'm going to be the only one flying in, but actually there was only one who didn't fly in. So there oh. were students from Ecuador, from uh, Czech Republic, yeah. from, from Mexico, from all over the place. Wow, so quite a diversity of nationalities here yes. in this, this intake of students. Yes. Mm. So tell me then about yourself in terms of your connection with a healthy living and healthy lifestyle. Did you... Did you have any knowledge or practice of healthy living or healthy lifestyle before you came to Hergelia? Not really, in many aspects, not okay. really. Um, I knew certain things, but I didn't really put many of them into practice, especially in regards to eating, uh, not eating late at night. Ah. This was one of the biggest changes when I came here, mm. from being used to eating at 10, 11, 12, 1, wow. uh, to eating at 6.30, and I can say... Just this change can completely change your health. Is that right? Yes. Ah. This is one thing which I would recommend to everybody to do it. Last meal, 6.30. Well, so is, is eating late um, sort of like a normal thing from your, in your country, in your background? Um, yeah. My grandparents at home eat even later. And now I'm trying to explain to them what I've learned here. But, okay. But also when I was uh, in the UK... Um, myself, when I was mm. living in Oman, I was also doing this kind of thing. So, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and not so healthy food either. It's really not good. Yeah. So that's been a really significant yeah. change that you've learned while you've been here. Yeah. And what kind of benefits have you experienced from adopting that lifestyle habit? Um, first of all, if you're eating extremely late, you're also not going to sleep because you're eating. So, okay. so first of all, when you eat earlier, you will also end up sleeping earlier. Uh -huh. Then while you sleep, the body truly rests. And when you wake up, you can wake up early, not mm. uh, 11, 12. You can wake up early and not just to wake up early, but to wake up early full of energy too. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you get all of those benefits. Yes. It has a carry-on effect. Yeah. It would be right till the next day. Like you would wake up feeling bright and good, wouldn't yeah. you? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, wow. The difference is huge. Yeah. That that's that's amazing. I guess when it's something that's breaking a cultural trend that has been so persistent in your own background, that's probably been quite a breakthrough for you, I would imagine. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um now is are there any other lifestyle yeah, things that, that you've heard here there's and learned many. here another one would be um a more specific one yes related to hydrotherapy okay so hydrotherapy of course is practiced at a sanitarium yes but also you can do it in your home ah. and um, in the simple way of having shower so oh so if before i was having just hot showers mm -hmm. at one point i started to do alternating shower and um what do you mean by alternating by shower? hot and then cold oh and then hot and cold or just once that's also one alternation and since i did this yes it's incredible how such a simple thing can bring so many benefits first of all yes you don't get a cold after ending with cold shower ah, second, interesting. Of, second of all you don't feel so cold in the winter this is in the winter you mean you have these showers in the winter and no but in the winter is when you would feel cold oh, by yes, coming yes. out from the warm shower only but ending yes, with yes. cold and the contrast is so good uh -huh. and uh, third of all the most interesting point is how it helps you to heal i would get cut i would get into accidents and alternating shower would probably help you heal 10 times faster that's amazing yeah wow because a lot of people like it's in it's almost like a myth for people they think oh if i if i have a lot of cold i'll get cold or catch a cold like you're yeah. saying but yeah. you're saying no that's yeah. not the case you're Completely. being stronger yeah. so what what is your understanding of the reason why it works so um what happens is vasodilation, when you use hot water, the blood vessels dilate, they become bigger, they relax and let the, yeah, let more blood flow through. But then as soon as you do the high contrast and then you put cold water, mm -hmm. really cold water, the higher mm -hmm. the contrast, the better, they 
vasoconstriction occurs, they okay. constrict, and then the blood rushes through. Oh, yeah. right. So you can tell that this has many benefits. Okay, so its, it's benefits are connected with improving blood flow, is blood that correct? Blood flow, therefore oxygen um, is being sent to the different parts of uh -huh, the body. Okay. And um, a ton of benefits happen from this. Yeah, wow, yeah, that's amazing. Including mood, mood, so yes. mentally and physically. Okay, multiple things, yeah. that's that's very good. So it's um very powerful and what I like about that is it's something simple that anyone can do at home. Yeah, anyone can do it at home. Yeah, yeah. So what would you say is the best way to do it? Like how much hot, how much cold? Um, the best way to do it is, this is in normal situations when you don't have any burns or mm -hmm. things like that, mm. um, is to go as hot as you can, have your shower clean, mm. and then do this at the end. So um, the ideal is three minutes hot and 30 seconds cold. Okay. Yeah, but, mm. and seven times. Seven between, times? Between four to seven times. But, wow. But just how Rotating. in the Bible we hear about the number seven and yes. how good it is. So <laughs> I think this would also be good to do seven times. Yes. Um, so 30 seconds cold and uh -huh. then... And then uh, three minutes hot again mm -hmm. and finishing on cold but if you only do it once it's still good so you have okay. your hot shower and then even if it lasts for 15 minutes and then end with cold even this is hydrotherapy yes so, so anyone can do it mm, anyone can mm, do it mm. and um, if you do it every day you just short shower this is really good and will if you do it in the morning it will uh, pump you up for the for day, the day. Yeah. <laughs> that's good that's so that's yeah. so nice a lot of people need something to pick them up at the start of the day so there you go you've given a nice healthful recommendation for that i like that that's that's so encouraging mm -hmm. and i like what you said about how it helped mentally as well help you have a sharper mind mm -hmm. and uh, sort of along those lines what i'm wondering is whether how your experience here with a healthy lifestyle has helped you spiritually what what's been in your experience with that so when we have a clear mind mm -hmm. we can also hear the the voice of god clearer mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and this is what god wants us to have a clear mind mm. uh, so all these things eating early will help us to have a clear mind um, eating not too much is also gonna help us to have a clear mind although i'm still working on that one yes. but <laughs> in the last meal of the night it should be smaller okay but um the fact that it's early allows mm. the food to digest and then the last moments of the day you can spend it reading praying uh, and not just feeling like oh, you just need to lie down and go straight to bed after right. your meal so you have a clear mind and god can speak to you and you can hear it ah uh, that's that's very important isn't it yeah because um we know Jesus says about eternal life being knowing God. And I mean, if you're going to know someone, you've got to be able to talk to them and hear them back, you know. So this sounds yeah. like it's it's very important part of our spiritual experience to be able to have what, yes. what you're sharing. That's that's really, really yes. powerful. Yeah. So now a lot of people come here to Hagelia to perhaps change their lifestyle, um, maybe look for a fresh start. If you were to meet someone like this who is wanting to adopt some lifestyle changes for the better, what, what would you say to them? What would you recommend? Are there any things that you have learned in your experience that have helped you maybe be motivated or stay on track? What, what would you say? So what I would recommend to someone who wants to change their lifestyle is the program of a day. Okay. Which they should uh, use to slowly change their current routine into a more healthy routine. Mm -hmm. Starting with um, water in the morning, drinking water in the morning, first of all, and then time with God. Oh. Time with God is so important. Um, followed by exercise. Okay. And then um, that's when the hydrotherapy could come in, could have some nice shower, ending yes. with cold just after the exercise. And then big breakfast, big healthy, ah. healthy breakfast. Um, and this is early in the morning, yes. not late. So no brunch, no breakfast slash lunch, only breakfast okay. early in the morning. Then lunch will have its, own, its place too. So by starting like this in the morning, it um, prepares the way for a good day. And therefore, if mm. there's depression, any mental problems like this, after a good few days of this, one week, two weeks, yes. you, can, you can no longer feel depressed like this because... 
you have a routine which mm. puts you into action. And when you put yourself into action, when you have something to do, yes. and I'll go into that in a minute, your mind is always occupied and not on negative things, but positive yes. things. So, okay. so exercise, word of God, eating healthy, and then you go about your day. But one other thing is mm. helping others. The biggest, the best thing is mission. Right. So a life without mission surely will lead to depression at some point or another or mm. unsatisfaction. You can never be fully satisfied unless you give. Wow, that's powerful. That is so powerful. Yeah, so, okay, so what I'm hearing you say is that people need to have a plan of what they're going to do throughout the day if they're wanting to make changes and then run with the plan and then have an outward focus. That's so good. I think that's very helpful advice for people and very relevant, as you say, about depression. You know, sometimes it's because people may be a bit aimless in their life and so they, you know, they don't have something to live for and then they can go down in a dark spiral. Yeah, I like what you've shared there. That's very... Yeah, and important. for young people, for young yes. people especially, mm. um, now with all the technology and everything, yes. mm. the last thing that almost all young people do before bed is mm. go on their phones oh. and spend time on their phones. And this is a big mistake because okay. um, in so many ways. So what I would recommend to them mm. is one hour before they fall asleep, you completely let go of any phone, screens oh. or anything like this. And the last hour, at least should be spent with family and then God. Okay. The last hour of the day. Or yes. else or else this also contributes to mental illness and therefore and eventually depression too. Mm -hmm. But time with God, time spent with family, this is the way to end the day. Not mm. with the phone, not mm. with technology. Yes, yeah. I like that. I think it would help a lot of a lot of people if they had that plan. Mm, thank you so much for sharing your perspectives. I think it sounds like you're speaking from experience. Like yeah, too. The, these things are, are things that you've experienced the benefits of and you're wanting yeah. other people to have that too. So that's, that's really wonderful. It's so good to meet young people who have a passion for this kind of thing because yeah. it's, it's always good to start at, at the beginning of the life yes. and have that flow through the rest of the years. Yes. Um, so that's a real blessing. Well, thank you so much for sharing with us today. We've been recording here live in Romania at Hergelia Lifestyle Center. Um, our guest has been Alexandru Anitza and um, I'm your host Casey Butler and thank you so much for tuning in to Healthy Living Around the World. God bless you all. This program has been brought to you by 3ABN Australia Radio.